Ever since Apple released the iPad, everyone has had the same burning question about it. Can the iPad replace my MacBook? And the answer has always been no. It can't. Until now. So iPad just announced the release of iPad OS 26 at WWDC, which will be releasing later this year in September. However, we're lucky enough to have an advanced copy of iPad OS 26. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all of the new features in iPad OS 26 that make it function more like a laptop and more like a MacBook. That disclaimer is super important because there are a ton of new features in iPad OS 26, but in this video, we're only going to be covering the ones that make it function more like a MacBook. So by the end of this video, if you're in between deciding which device you should get, an iPad or a MacBook, you should be able to decide for yourself if you need an entirely dedicated computing setup like a MacBook Pro, or can you get by with an iPad, with a Magic Keyboard, with the added functionality of an Apple Pencil. Now just for some context and reference, in this video I'm going to be using and showing you iPad OS 26 on a M4 iPad Pro with the new Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil Pro. However, iPad OS 26 is going to be coming to a range of existing iPads, and I'll put that list somewhere over here or in the description below for you to check out. Now, without further ado, let's dive into all of the new features in iPad OS 26 that finally make your iPad work more like a MacBook. Okay, so first up, let's cover the new windowing system. This works exactly how it does on a MacBook. You can now resize your apps and your windows to any size that you want, and you can even move them around in their resized form which is so welcomed and a feature that I've been waiting on forever. You can also snap them to default sizes if you prefer, and you do this by hovering over these new three dots, which should look incredibly familiar to you if you've ever used a MacBook before, but we will get to that in a second. But if you hover and hold over these, then you'll have all these options for default sizes that you can snap your windows to, and you just simply pick one of them. And as I just mentioned, you have also the three dots, expand, minimize, and close buttons, and they do exactly what you would expect them to do, and they work exactly as they do on a MacBook as well. This is overall going to change multitasking and make it a lot more similar to a laptop. The big constraint previously was that you could only really work on one window at a time or one app, and that was a tad annoying given how much power the new M4 and other M chip iPads have. And so now this makes productivity and working on multiple apps much better. Next up, we have something that I thought I would never see on an iPad, and that's the menu bar. So it works exactly as it does on a MacBook. You're able to access a menu bar that allows you to configure various attributes based on the app that you have open. So just to quickly demonstrate, I'll open Notion and I get all these options at the top menu bar that I didn't have in the past. Now they're not exactly the same as the functionality that you would get on a real computer, so on your MacBook, but it's definitely welcomed and you can access most of what you need very, very quickly. Next up, let's jump into the Files app, which also gets a massive overhaul, which was definitely needed. So this is the equivalent to the Finder app on your MacBook, and you finally have collapsible and expandable columns that give you additional information on all of your files and documents at a glance, making it feel much more like a computer. You can also customize and personalize your folders using colors and icons and emojis. Now, if you're struggling to figure out how to change the color, this took me a second as well, but if you right click or hold on a folder and come down to customize and then go all the way down in your tags to a specific color, if you select that color, then the folder becomes that color. That was a little bit hidden and took me a second to figure out just in case you're struggling. And also if you needed to access any of these folders quickly, you can also just drag them down to your brand new dock for easy access. This transitions us really nicely into the dock, which now functions a lot more like the MacBooks dock. We've always had this dock before on the iPad, but it wasn't quite as functional as the MacBooks. Now if you drag and drop a folder to hold in the dock and then click on that folder, the folder will expand right on the dock, letting you access any item you need really quickly and jumping into it, which is a welcome change. Next up, you can now also run background tasks. So if you wanted to export a video in DaVinci Resolve, for example, and while the video is exporting, you wanted to go and do something else, you totally could, which again now speaks to the productivity of the iPad and how it's changing and becoming an actual pro device. We've had incredible computing power ever since Apple switched over to the M series for their iPad line, but it's been a little difficult to make use of that power. Now you can with all these multi-app productivity functions. Now, personally, because iPad OS 26 is still in beta, 
I wasn't able to see that background task notification that Apple showed off in their keynote and on their website that you should be seeing if something is happening in the background. I assume that this will get added later. However, as you saw in my example, I was able to export my video in DaVinci and I was able to leave DaVinci before it was done exporting. And then when I went into my files without reopening DaVinci, the file was there. So definitely the background stuff does work. Even if you leave the app, you're just not able to see the notification right now or me personally, I wasn't anyway. Now let's move on to what's probably my favorite edition in iPad OS 26 and that's the preview app which is finally available on the iPad. If you're a heavy Mac user then you definitely know what I'm talking about because I use this app on my Mac every single day thousands of times. The preview app allows you to quickly view images and PDF documents and make any changes but I would argue that it's even better on the iPad because it's compatible with the Apple Pencil Pro. So you can now quickly mark up documents, sign documents, make sketches onto PDFs which are just much more immersive and intuitive than using a keyboard and a mouse. If I was a student this app alone with the Apple Pencil Pro would be the number one reason for me to use an iPad over a MacBook. Being able to get into documents using the preview preview app with the pencil basically eliminates the need for notebooks altogether. Now this one is a bit random but the pointer is no longer a dot. I know that sounds weird but the pointer being an actual mouse cursor now just makes it feel more like a computer. Now I personally use my iPad on the go so I have the 11 inch but if you're in the market with all these new features and being able to make more use of the screen I would definitely spring for the bigger 12.9 inch version. Now like I said at the beginning of this video there are a ton of other features in iPad OS 26 but in this video, we're just covering the ones that make it function more like a MacBook. So hopefully you got exactly what you were looking for from this video. Now, if you want my opinion, whether the iPad can truly replace a MacBook, I think we're getting there. I think we're really, really close. I would finally feel 100% confident and comfortable leaving my MacBook at home and just taking my iPad on the go. If I wanted to edit, I have access to DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, and because it works so much more like a computer now, I can definitely make this thing work. So for me, especially if I was a student, this is what I would be picking up. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.